Today, we're going to be taking a look at The Phantom. Not this one, but this one. Sci-fi original miniseries from 2009, so stay tuned. Alright guys, welcome back to Comic Gen TV, where all geek culture collides. And if you're new to the channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on future videos. Today, we're taking a look at the 2009 Sci-Fi Channel original miniseries, The Phantom. Reimagined and reloaded. I have next to it the original, The Phantom, starring Billy Zane, from 1996. So just to compare, really, um, I've heard I've heard a lot of people talk very very badly about this miniseries. I really liked it. I thought it was a great uh, update, a great reimagining of the Phantom character. Uh, sure, he's not in the classic Phantom garb like Billy Zane was, uh, but he he was updated. He needed to be reimagined really uh for today's society you know in billy zane in the billy zane phantom and all the uh comic books and comic strips and cartoons and everything the phantom has just been an ordinary man in a leotard with two guns and a tribe of bandari warriors at his side there wasn't really anything special about him other than having the title of the Phantom passed down from father to son. Every single Phantom named Kit Walker, except for the first one. And I think Billy Zane was the 20... What was it? The 21st, 21st or 22nd Phantom, I believe. Uh, and I think... This one is supposed to be his son. Not really B the Billy Zane Phantom's son, uh, but the same era Phantom, uh, his son. And what happened was, while in America, uh, Chris's parents were killed in a car wreck caused by the Singh Brotherhood. And Chris, who is the new Phantom... Uh, he was found and adopted by a family and he didn't realize, he didn't know what his lineage was until the, uh, the Bandaris found him and, uh, revealed everything to him and trained him. It says here, evil has a new enemy, Chris Moore, played by Ryan Carnes is an urban daredevil who gets his kicks racing across rooftops. When a secret organization approaches him with proof that he is actually the son of a legendary international crime fighter called the Phantom, he is thrust into a world he never knew existed. A world of exotic islands, secret lairs, and a heritage that borders on royalty. Reimagined and reloaded, this classic superhero is upgraded for the 21st century with a new state-of-the-art costume and a newly formed rivalry against some of the most techno-savvy villains to ever terrorize the world. It's explosive action and non-stop adventure from start to finish as the Phantom comes to life. When I first saw this DVD at Walmart, the first thing I noticed was The Phantom. I was like, all right. So I go up to it. I look at it. Right away, I could tell, I could tell they were going for this type of Phantom. And it wasn't just, you know, an, a completely different character because I knew it because of the belt and the rings. At first, I didn't really care for the look. 
uh, because that, that's to me it didn't look like the phantom this was the phantom okay the mask the leotard you know all that but as I watched this it grew on me it made sense to me Chris is a parkour uh, free running uh, individual and it made sense you know, you can't really, honestly, I don't understand how anyone could move in such a tight-fitting outfit like that. But this, it made sense. They updated his costume. They gave him more protection so that, you know, he wouldn't get killed uh, as easily as getting shot. Another thing I really liked about this is they explained why the Phantom carries guns. He's a hero. He's not supposed to kill people. He doesn't kill people. The guns are there for defense and disarming only. The Phantom never shoots to kill. And that's the way it's explained in this. It was never really explained in the Billy Zane Phantom. But... This Phantom really took the legend of the Phantom to a whole new level. It explained everything to first-time viewers. You know, it explained the purpose of the Skull Ring and of the Good Ring. Uh, it explained how the uh, Phantom, or how Kit Walker, proves himself worthy of taking up the mantle of the Phantom. And though throughout the movie uh, he goes by the name Chris Moore, at the end he finally goes by his birth name of Kit Walker. And I think he becomes the 20, 22nd, no, 23rd Phantom. It's a really great story. I really like it. I've watched it several times. It never really gets old to me. I don't understand why people have such a big problem with this. Personally, I found it refreshing, original. Uh, really nice take on the Phantom. Could there have been a little bit more action uh, from the Phantom? Sure. Especially that scene where he's do, uh, free running on top of the light post to get to the politician or whatever to save his life. Uh, that you, They could have done that a little bit faster. Uh, but overall, wasn't, it wasn't bad. It really wasn't. I really enjoyed this version of The Phantom. Uh, they really took it to a whole new level um, here. Special features, interview with director Palo Barsman, and interview with Ryan Karnas, the Phantom. I really liked how they gave him a new enemy to deal with. Um, it wasn't just the Singh Brotherhood that he had to deal with, but a new enemy he had to fight from within his own organization. And how they made the Phantom more of a an agency uh, rather than just a tribe of warriors you know helping him out it's they evolved the idea of the phantom which is more realistic than saying oh there's this guy who he he gets handed down the role of the phantom from his father and then he hands it down to his son and he protects the uh bandar tribe and bengala and he sometimes gets help from uh, the Bandar tribe. No, this has it to where the Bandar tribe is now working actively with him internationally to stop the Singh Brotherhood. They've taken his wealth. They've taken the, Kit, the wealth of the Bandar tribe and Kit Walker's wealth. They've put all that funding into the Phantom to give him better weapons, to give him extensive training, to give him um, a suit. And this suit 
was originally meant for Chris's father, which was perfect. Um, he, his father never got to wear it before he was killed, but it was originally meant for his father. And it's just, it's a really great idea. I really wish sci-fi would have continued and made it a full-blown series. I can understand why they didn't, because it didn't get the re response that they were hoping for. Uh, but I really liked it. I really wish they would go back and um, maybe make a sequel. It, it's been seven years. I understand. Ten... Uh, seven eight years since it came out i understand but they could still go back they can make a sequel to this maybe put a little bit more of a budget into it and make it really great uh honestly i think this was a hell of a lot better than this one so anyway that's my thoughts on 2009's sci-fi miniseries the phantom i really enjoyed it uh if you guys have a chance Give it a chance. Uh, if you've already given it a chance, give it a second chance, a third chance. I really liked it. I'm a huge Phantom fan. Have been since I was introduced to the Phantom uh, with T Phantom 2040. It runs for 180 minutes. Give it a chance. Give it another chance. Give it another look. As a longtime Phantom fan, I really, really like this. I wish they would turn this into the comic book. It makes sense. Uh, they kind of taken stuff from this and put it into the comics, uh, like with the last Phantom. But I kind of wish they would use this story in the comics. So anyway, guys, if you're new to this channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on future videos. I'm Shannon for Comic TV. Take care.